What's good? What's good? What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Killer Priest Podcast Show. I'm your host, Killer Priest. And on the one and twos, because it's retrograde, trying to get the class. <laughs> it's none other than A Diesel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. AD. What's going on? Oh, man. <laughs> and Mojito. He messing up the show already. Mojito man. jumped right in, knowing that he's getting on point. You know, the uh, cat had to jump right in it because it knew the star was saying, What's up to the chat room? Today is going to be real good. Yeah. Chief Kabachi. Sorry, show. we're late, y'all. Sorry. It's all my bad. It's my fault. Retro, man. Retro. Man, I just came from a gig, so. Yeah, exactly. It was a little crazy. Yo, we got, we got some special, special guests up in the house that came back. Yeah. Oh man, with another special guest that's gonna be it's gonna be incredible. We got Santos Benacci back in the place to be. <laughs> Make some noise. Yo, and with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We got a special guest. Who is it, A D? <laughs> Yo, I'm still trying to get the adjustments here. Okay. Uh, Uncle Nameless is in the house. Yo, what's good? Hold on up. Here he comes, here he comes. Don't mind us all here. Yeah, we just get it together. Yo, they coming up in the chat. How's it? I'm going to start when you ready. We're ready. Whatever. Go for it. How's it been, man? How's how it been, man? What's up, Uncle Namus? <laughs> What's good? good yeah, I'm good, brother. I'm good. Yo. Um, what up, what up? Chilling, man. Chilling. Chilling, bro. Yo, what's good, Santos? <laughs> how's it how's been going on? What's been going on? Oh, life's Lovely. just uh, getting better by the day here in Mexico, in Oaxaca. It's just dreamland. I'm just, <laughs> I'm in heaven. <laughs> oh, wow, man. I always wanted to get out to Oaxaca, man. Wow, I heard some deep stuff about Oaxaca. They had the, uh, it's beautiful people there or what? What's what's going on? Uh, look, there's a lot of conscious people coming through. Everyone's a healer, a guru, a curandera, a brujo. Mm. Uh, you know, they've all got something to uh, teach, to share, to heal. A lot of healers here. It's just incredible. Um, and I've been doing a lot of uh, remedies and healings with um, the ancient Zapoteca people. In mm. Oaxaca, the original people are the Zapotecas. Mm. And over in the Yucatan, you've got the uh, Mayans. Mm. But uh, they're very similar to the Mayan people, but... Um, They've got their own traditions, and they're very nice, loving, soft people. And I've been getting traditional healings. It's been fantastic. Man, I need to get out there, man. I burnt my foot this week, <laughs> last week at the beginning. I need to get out there and get some of that healing. <laughs> what type of heal healing y'all doing out there? Is it like uh, in in internal things it's like internal. that? Yeah, I've done, I've done um, some. Definitely need some of that. Uh, uh, treatment as well. Do you know about Cambo? Oh, uh, nah, I think I, I never I heard of that. Is it with, with the spirit or, or just eternal it, stuff? It's the frog medicine. So what they do is they scrape the poison off these frogs from Peru. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they put some dots on you. I've got three dots there. <laughs> right. Uh, the week before I got eight, eight dots. Mm. And then mm. two weeks before that, I got them on my back. But what happens is you um 
you get the poison, you don't get any psychedelics, but you do purge. So you do a lot of vomiting and it's... Mm, so it's interesting. Like, it's like a half an hour of hell, you know, and then after that, wow. I bet. <laughs> I bet you're feeling good, right? He's like, yeah, yeah man. I need to get out there and get that, man. Shout out to the chat room that's in the building right now. Shout out to the chat room. Yeah, we on point. So, man, man. Ancient astronomy. Man, ancient astronomy, bro. bro. Why are they trying to, why do they want to hide it? I know the Vatican and all of that, uh, the, the secret society and stuff want to hide it. But why, you know? What's the what's the what's the what's the reason why they want to uh, hide all this information? Well, that's where our true power comes from. Our true power comes from knowing the gods, and the gods are the planets, the sun, the moon, Jupiter, Saturn. These are the electromagnetic dynamos in our cosmos, which determine every single step that we take in our lives. We think that we have pure and total freedom and free will, but the stars are also uh, managing our lives. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the science of astrology being the mother of all sciences, because it's simply the, just the science of electromagnetism, which is... Pardon the, the only science, brother. Uh, Mejito, could you please... <laughs> He's so just smack me. Yo, he be wildin', man. It can't be wildin'. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Continue. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Uh, what are you doing in the building? <laughs> Shout out to so Mejito. They're going to try and diminish, dilute, uh, mm. disregard, and disrepute the ancient sciences that uh, all the ancients knew, and they knew that they could be um, helped, guided, strengthened and empowered by the science of electromagnetism because when you know astrology correctly you can see you can peer into the future you can peer into what's coming around the corner in your life if you want to you don't have to uh, most people choose not to even though they love and respect astrology um, but other people they like to know they like to see what the dynamics are that are coming and when to buy and sell or when to, you know, um, look for a, a, a mate or a partner, when to move house, when to travel, all of these things are told in the chart, you know. So they use it, as JP Morgan said, millionaires don't use astrology, only billionaires do. Mm. Because... <laughs> mm. Deep saying right there, make some noise for that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because, well, they're, they're the smart ones that are holding the knowledge against the people who are dumbed down and educated. And so they're going to use that to empower themselves. And that's, where, that's why they are so powerful, because they keep the science for themselves and then teach you in their institutions that astrology is from the devil or it's a pseudoscience. Mm -hmm. so what a better way to diminish... Uh, you know, the God science that uh, always was and always will be. They've never been able to destroy it. They've never been able to get rid of it. They've burned at the stake many astrologers. They've tortured them. They've put them through the Inquisition. They still ridicule them. Uh, someone like me will be absolutely ignored and detested by the mainstream. They'll just laugh and say, oh, this guy's an astrologer, so he's, you know, he's... He's a, a loony or he's just, um, you know, not, not normal and, or anything that will suit their, their paradigm that they're locked in. So, but astrology is coming back. I'm doing my best to um, teach it to the world in the simplest way possible. It's the mother of all science. Without it, you are virtually just an ignoramus and, um, I thank the Christian churches for preserving alive this great science because they always teach about the, um, the saviour and his 12 um, 
followers or disciples, which are Aries, Taurus, Gemini, etc. Those are the 12 disciples. And the sun is the portal of salvation. It's a wormhole. It's the only way out of the uh, spatial timeline that we're in. It's through the sun. That's why the Bible says, no one goes to the Father except through me, because mm -hmm. it's the Son of God speaking. And the Son of God is the Son. It's not my Son. It's God's Son, because God put it up there. I didn't. Mm -hmm. So that is a portal. It's not a globe. It's not a, <laughs> it's not how they teach us, you know, a, 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 some sort of a, a hydrogen bomb. Uh, it's it's a luminous it's a luminous magnetic beam, and it's the archangel Michael. And through that being, we go back to source and unlimited and unconditioned cause where we belong, and accept. And this is where we um, inherit our full unlimited godship, because here we are conditioned and limited. So. Astrology is the science that teaches you all of that, Killer. Mm. Mm. I know a couple of the um, prophets. Didn't uh, Daniel deal with this, the uh, the stars? Wasn't he like an astrologist? In, uh, of course. In the scriptures, like he, he, he interpreted dreams and stars of uh, Nebuchadnezzar or something like that? Well, he was an astrologer. That's why Nebuchadnezzar called uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm. to his court and Daniel to uh, interpret the dream. And he also called up all of his astrologers of all his kingdom and they all failed, whereas Daniel, who knew the true tropical science of astrology, knew the answer to the dream because he knew the science of astrology, which is how you become a prophet. Daniel is known as a prophet or a... Um, I guess you could say, yeah, those Daniel, um, Zechariah, um, uh, mm. all of those, all of those prophetic books, they are all the prophets of God. You can't be a prophet of God without being an astrologer. This mm. is why in the book of Job, uh, 32, 20, uh, 38, uh, 32, um, God says to Job, do you know how to read the Maseroth? Now, Maseroth means zodiac. So here it is in the Bible where God is basically advising him and humanity, of course, that you have to learn how to read the Maseroth. If you don't, you cannot be a prophet of God. You cannot tell forth the words of Scripture and of spirituality and mysticism. You will always be basically just an opinionated um, theorist. And that's not what syncretism teaches. Te syncretism teaches you how to have direct knowledge and how to have mystical knowledge directly. No secondhand knowledge, no gurus who feed your mind with a whole load, load of BS and run you around in circles. You get access to the Akashic Records directly. And how you do that is through syncretism. Mm, man, that was heavy right there. <laughs> That's heavy. What's good, my brother? <laughs> How you, how's the music coming? Yeah, it's good, bro. Yeah, exactly. Coming along now, bro. We've just been um we've been spending the last few months just renovating, man. Oh yeah? Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, He's just coming in with your going... pops. <laughs> huh? Hey. I said what you said, you just spent the last month renovating. I'm sorry, I'll cut you off. My bad. Go ahead. No, you're no you're a good yeah, we got a we got a warehouse and we're just renovating, bro. We're building a studio and uh photography studio. We just we're just plodding along, bro. Oh, okay. All right. Now I see you sitting up here, your pops is dropping some heavy, heavy knowledge right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping some bombs right now, man. Wow. Synchro man, synchronicity, man. That's I mean, that's where it's at. So they've been trying to hold this back. I'm going back to you, uh, uh Santos. Uh they've been holding this back for a long time because we have this power, like you said. And um 
it's even in the medical, right? Astrology is uh is it is does it even affect the medical? Of course it does. It, it's because the medical is a physical plane. Astrology penetrates the four frequencies of nature. And in science, uh, in science talk, modern day science talk, they will call that plasma, mm. gas, liquid and solid. Well, in astrology, that's just fire, air, water and earth. They are the three, are the four solid frequencies of the material world. So the bottom one, that bottom finger, that represents... Could you say that again? What's the four elements? The... So fire, air, water, and earth. And in science speak, that is plasma, gas, liquid, solid. Solid is the body. Therefore, astrology will tell you everything about your body. It will tell you everything about your emotional water field. It will tell you everything about your mental field. It will tell you everything about your mystical nature because it has those four elements. You see, when you do this with your ten fingers, you have the Kabbalistic tree. And up on the top here you have Kether, which is ether, the magnetic field. Oh, wow. And down the bottom, You've got Earth, Malkuth. Wow. So you've got. That's why you always give th thumbs up when something is good. You always put your thumb up because that is the highest of all the elements. That is God. This is the Earth. So when you do this mudra, you are earthing yourself. When you do this one, you are stabilizing your emotional field, your mental field. Here you are getting inspiration. Mm. You see, so, so have a look at this mudra that when you meditate, you see many people holding this mudra. Well, it's nothing but the okay sign. Right. See, when, exactly. So you see Buddha sitting under the tree holding this mudra and, and that's why you go like this when everything is good. And like this, when everything is etherically good. So just remember, there you've got That's hard. ether, fire, mm -hmm. air, water, earth. From ether to earther. Here is where you earth. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So, again, all these mudras have been lost. I was taught a mudra by uh, Mashika shaman in mm. costa rica he okay. said the most important mudras you can do is this one you grab two hands and you do the okay sign mm -hmm. for men you put your right hand first and then you connect those fingers right now you have something you can put on your pineal gland right and this is one of the holiest mudras. So like this. Hold on, I got to go. Now I got to go and talk to the bloods, man. <laughs> the, bloods, yeah, the bloods out here be throwing this symbol all the time. <laughs> and it's really an esoteric thing, huh? <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's crazy. So when, when people do this, mm -hmm. they, are, they are giving you half of one of the holiest mudras that exist. And when you see this one, the coronado, mm -hmm. which is supposedly for the devil, yeah. well, if you do two of those and you join those in a mudra, oh, there you go. That one as well, you can, you can uh, sweep that from your bottom chakra to the top chakra, mm. and, you, and you can channel that energy up into your head, heaven. Mm. Where the heaven is, Aries, the cerebrum. You bring the energy up with those mudras. Up, 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 up. So you've got, you see the people at the rock concerts doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a half truth for you because when you join them together, now you, now you get not just a polarity, 
masculine and feminine. Now you bring them together and now you are making power for your electromagnetic body. Mm. Nice. I remember you also mentioning that the horns came from the age of Taurus to represent Taurus the bull. Was that also accurate too? Because they would also show pictures of Abraham with horns. Mm. So we know that horns aren't necessarily a bad thing because it's representing the bull. Right. When they when they when they killed the bull, right? When they when they were worshiping the bull, that was actually the age of Taurus, is that correct? Absolutely. Mhm. Nice, nice. Mhm. Yep. Yeah, the good. Yeah, the bull and um <laughs> Yeah, the bull and um also Moses, right? The golden calf. Yes, yes. The horns of Moses are actually the horns of Aries because uh. Moses the age of Aries came after Taurus. That's why Moses, the ram, mm -hmm. and the pastor, remember, he went into Egypt. When um, Israel sent his sons into Egypt, he said, don't tell the Pharaoh that you are shepherds. Tell them that you are cowherds because the Egyptians do not respect the shepherds. They mm. respect the cowherds. So good old uh, Joseph goes down to Egypt and said, we come from a, a faraway land and we are cowherds. Mm. He wasn't to say they were shepherds because Moses is Mars. Mars's. Mars. And so when Moses. the age of Aries succeeded the age of Taurus, Moses destroyed the bull, the golden bull. He destroyed it as a symbol that the age of Taurus is over now it's the age of the ram and aries uh four thousand to two thousand years ago there were a lot of empirical wars it was the age of war pisces which came two thousand years after was an age of mutation change destruction mutability um upheaval uh the mutability of the two fish the emotions being challenged, being transformed. And now, of course, on the 21st of December, this year, we're going straight into Aquarius. Mental, knowledge, science, humanitarian. It'll be much more humanitarian than Pisces. So this is how you follow the ages. It's all astrological. Mm. Yo, uh, shout out to Brian Smith. I'll get right back to you. Um, shout out to, yo, if you have um, a question for Santos, he's right here right now. You can hit that super chat and make sure you hit that subscribe because the more likes and the likes, because the more likes, the more people that come and they'll, they, you know, they'll be more aware and the government won't try to shut us down. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> make sure because we, we kick that real truth. Um, um, yeah, man, that's that's some heavy stuff. You said uh, Biden has a question. I think he said you. Uh, they said Biden uses kids' organs to study the stars. I don't know what that meant. I don't know about that one. Um, I don't know you, but Biden uses kids' organs to study the stars. You know, I don't know. No, I'm not. <laughs> that's that stuff goes on, but that's more of a. Um... That's more of a dark science. That's more for um, these are the left-hand path servants. They are Shiv they are Shivites. Mm. The um, uh, Brahmins and Vaishnavas, mm. which are which are the right-hand pathers. They don't do that. They just use the pure science of electromagnetism. They don't murder animals to do their aug aug augury and their um, future telling. So these are sorcerers. They're not magicians. We are magicians. Mm. Do you feel that they came back to, like, this war been going on since the beginning of time and that they came back to just uh, trick the people and, and put them in some type of, uh, you know, servitude under them or, you know, get their own world going on? Yeah, the, the demons. In Bhagavad Gita, it says there's only two kinds of entities, demigods, mm demons mm -hmm. so we belong to the demigod class because we're truthers mm. we live 
we live in purity, we live in goodness, we love our neighbours, we love our friends, they, they're murderers. And so the Shivites, <clears throat> they're on the left-hand path. And so for them, you know, to murder animals, they've been taught these sciences which are accurate as well by the demonic entities, whereas we, the pure ones, we avoid this. We, um, we just stick with natural science. Mm. Question from uh, Big, Big Bud Wolf. He asks, uh, Santos, could you uh, build on the importance of Saturn and Jupiter in conjunction in Aquarius this December? Okay, so on the 21st of December this year, Saturn and Jupiter will be on the same degree, zero degrees Aquarius, mm. on that day. They will both enter exactly on the same degree. This is significant. This is very, very rare for them to enter a sign together on the same degree. The last time that happened, I believe, I may be wrong, was 2,000 years ago when they both did the same thing in Pisces. So what will happen is when these two big boys, because there's always been a war between Saturn and his son Jupiter, Jupiter castrated Saturn, Saturn castrated his daddy Uranus. So there's a genealogy or a dynasty of succession in which the planets rule. But you see, Jupiter was the ruler of Pisces. Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius. So I'm having my Saturn return coming up. My son is going to have it next year when he hits 29. <laughs> but we, we, both me and my son have Saturn in Aquarius. So we are Aquari Saturn, Saturnian Aquarians. So we are, all, we are going to... Saturnian Aquarians are going to benefit the most from the age of Aquarius because that's where our Saturn is. <laughs> mm. so, um, Nameless, are you into the are you into the uh, astrology? You know about astronomy. Where you at with it? Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. That's deep. No, I'm uh, I'm always following in Dad's footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely no genius. <laughs> like but, uh, father, like the sun. But the sun is S U N, right? As you shine like yeah. one, that's what we say. You shine like one. <laughs> Uncle yeah, Nameless, what what was your sign again? I'm a Libra. Libra. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Is your birthday coming up, huh? Or you passed, or what? Uh, ju just had it last week, bro. A few days ago. Mm. Nice. Happy birthday. My sister's a. Uh, Thanks, brother. My sister's a Libra. Oh, Keep nice. everything balanced, huh? Yeah. We're going through that. Uh, we got another question for you, Santos, from Brian Smith. He said, uh, well, well, they stole everything from the people. Anything after uh, 1500 is made up of lizard people. <laughs> uh, no, nah, no, nah, he was just making a statement. He was talking about the lizard people. I think the, the reptilians and things like Do you think it's the reptilians that's uh, starting all of this? The reptilians, insectilians, and... All these cats, these characters, these uh, Nephilims or whatever they call what what you call them? Uh, yeah, look, I call them the fallen. They're just demonic. They're just entities who uh, don't don't care for natural science and to live in harmony with other creatures. They want to be in control. They want to rule or ruin, and they don't come from outer space. They come from under the earth. Mm. Under the earth, according to Bhagavad Gita, we have mm. a, uh, a, a Bumandala Jambudweep, flat, horizontal, stationary earth, under mm. which there are seven planets, which are also terrestrial, and that's where the fallen ones live. And they come up through the oceans, they come up through the North Pole, they come up from the ring of Antarctica around the earth, and they, they have usurped the control of the Midgard, the middle garden of the Yggdrasil uh, solar system that we live in, and this is forbidden. But, but their time is running out. That's why they've jumped us with the coronavirus pandemic, 
because this is their last and final chance to get a hold and a grip of the human population, which is ascending. So they are desperate. They're losing. They will lose. <laughs> we will win and we will regain our paradise ache earth where there will be peace, there will be music, dancing, abundance, prosperity, peace and joy and bliss for everyone. Coming soon. Coming so, soon. So you're saying the paradise that the Bible speaks on is upon us very soon? Yeah, for sure. Wow. Because sure. I thought it would be something that we wouldn't be able to experience until ages because we supposedly just left the age of Pisces and on December 21st, 2012, right? And then we've been in the cusp into the age of Aquarius. Is that true? Yeah. yeah, it's been a cusp of about 50 years since okay. 1962 to um, 2012. That was the 50-year 50, 50 cusp. But then there's this seven-year, eight-year thing to 2020 where it's like a, it's in the, in the scriptures. I, I think it's where um, it's described as the seven-year tribulation. Hmm. So once that's over, the tribulation where they persecute God's people, or in other words, conscious people, um, then they are cast into the abyss forever. No return. Goodbye. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that's why this is a very important time to become conscious. Now's the time, yeah, now's the time. We, uh, we can't afford to sit on our laurels. Now we need to do our protocols. We need to uh, be centered, grounded, know who we are, do a lot of meditation, have a lot of time to yourself, you know, to know yourself. Uh, if you don't, what will happen is you'll lose yourself in your friends. Hmm. Uh, when I was a teenager, every new friend that came along, I started talking like them joking around, like, laughing like them. Mm. I, I started modifying my personality in accord with theirs. And that was good in, in many ways because most of those were good friends, but some of them weren't. And then so what happens is you dilute your own true, you've got to have, you've got to have love for yourself and you've got to know that you are beautiful and powerful and you are unlimited in, internally and that you are all that is because everyone is a reflection of you so if you can live like that you won't dilute yourself you see people who don't do enough meditation they're always running around looking for a partner a lover you know of friends even though they're not good friends but they hang on to them um it causes it weakens you it weakens your soul you don't expand your heart radiation you actually dilute it. So you need to be careful who your friends are. Um, That's the truth right there. But <laughs> at the same time, you need friends. So just just be careful and protect yourself always. <clears throat> <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, that's 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 on point, man. That's 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 real. You threw me on nameless was like that's the truth right there. I feel you right. I know I know that's right, man. That's some real so about um paradise under the earth and Islam is a planet. Okay. Oh, somebody shout out to Cohen. What does the uh the the beast represent? The the, um, the beast with the dra the dragon with the seven heads. Well, it's um, <laughs> the Bible is a multi-level book. The dragon with the seven heads is the kundalini and the kundabhafa inside of your body. And the seven heads are the seven chakras, which is, a, your, which is your seven conditioned conscious states, which you have accepted in this contract of incarnation that you are experiencing. So that dragon is in you mm. and the seven heads of the dragon. You see, it has 10 heads. Oh, and sorry. It has 10 horns mm. and seven heads. Right. Well, these are the 10 horns because if you look at the Kabbalistic tree, you'll notice that your seven chakras, three of them have two 
have two uh, chakras, uh, two uh, sephiroth mm -hmm. to them. So the ten-horned, seven-headed beast is in your body. Mm. And mm. so yeah, that's the, the fleshly nature that we have. And so, but on the material political plane, it's talking about the seven empires <clears throat> that have ruled the earth. Mm. And, and so, and they have their period of time in which they <clears throat> control the earth. And um, I suppose cause um, humanity to further evolve by causing chaos. Chaos out of order and vice versa, order out of chaos. So everything, everything is as it should be. We look around and we see a lot of chaos, but there's also a lot of bliss. That's because the two um, work together to bring about the final result. You know, it's you don't make an omelette without breaking the shells of eggs, right? You have to break those eggs, man. So <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of broken heads. There's going, to, there's going to be a lot of damage. But in the end, we of the 144,000, which represent the mystical class that will be ascending, oh! we will um, come out on top. You know, we, we will ascend. We're, we're not descending. Mm. So we just have to stay close to the path, brother. Mm. Heavy stuff. Go ahead. Would you, say, would you say the politics that are happening now are somewhat of prophecy? Perhaps in the stars or, or yeah. the politics, like even the uh, elections happening and all that? Because right now there's a, it's a time of transition and chaos, but it almost seems so perfect that it's all happening right at 2020. Exactly. Yeah. So, Which yeah, is, it's, um, it, is, it is because, you see, the Bible is a multi-level book. Mm -hmm. And this is what people fail to understand. Mostly in church, when I was Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. I learned that the Bible was literal and symbolical. And that's the two levels. Right. Right? It's symbolical when it suits them, but it's literal when they want to impose their dogma. <laughs> yeah. <And> so, <laughs> this is so this for, <laughs> Listen, go to sleep. If you up, this is for all those that are awake. So we're going in deep right now. He's <laughs> about to go in real deep. So the ones who can't take it, I mean, you can turn off your YouTube, hide, go under the cover. This one's for the ones who really, 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 really want to get deep. You know what I'm saying? So we dropping some real truth. Santos, go ahead. Continue. Continue, my brother. You you want it. Yeah, for sure. So um, once you have the keys to understanding the Bible, the keys are simple. The keys are natural science. So as the Bible tells you itself, it is a two-edged sword. It can separate the spirit from the soul, which is impossible because they are the same, one and the same. We are spirit souls. Mm -hmm. But that's what the Bible can do. In other words, it can fool the ones who are not ready and who will be fooled, but it can ascend and teach the highest of spiritual motifs and, um, and teachings mm -hmm. to those who are ready. It's not for everybody. That's why the Bible can make you stupid <laughs> or it can make you enlightened. You need the key. And the key is the wave. As Walter Russell said, the key to understanding the universe is in the wave. Mm. Everything is about waves. And so the Bible is speaking about electromagnetic natural phenomena. Mm. That's why sometimes God is called the God of war, the God of love, the God of truth, the God of the lie. In the Bible, the God is everything, is, is the God of absolutely everything. You know, he causes wars. He causes peace. 
He causes truth. He fools his prophets. He kills his people. <clears throat> How many times did he murder hundreds of thousands of Israelites in the wilderness when they're trekking? Of course, this is not literal, <laughs> mm -hmm. but but it's it's showing you that the nature of this demigod is polarized. <clears throat> You've got red shift, blue shift. You, you don't have one thing. Eventually, when we get into harmony, we will have one thing. But at the moment, we're dealing in a very dualistic plane. And so this is how people are being manipulated. Uh, Pythagoras called it living duality in unity. And I think Plato said it is living unity in duality. Either way, it's the same thing. So if you can reach unity through duality, you reach the monad. See, God is a monad at the top, mm -hmm. a dyad at the second level, a triad at the third level, a tetrad at the fourth level, the tetragrammaton, mm. yod, he, va, he, ji, ho, va. That's the four elements. So when you get, the, when you get to the monad, monos, number one, you now have... You're now with the source. You are now a sorcerer. You know, mm. a sorcerer is one who is connected to source. So unless you reach that state, you're, you're not ready for what's coming. You have to do that work now. You have to be a mystic now. And, and, and vibrate mm. on a high frequency. Exactly, on the correct frequency, the, the frequency of love, because it's, it's not just a high frequency. There are many frequencies. Mm. We're not here to raise the frequency. Some frequencies need to be lowered. They need mm -hmm. to be slowed down. We have to work with the right frequencies in every area. You see, your liver, for instance, if your liver is down, um, you may have to raise the frequency through certain protocols. Your heart, you may need to lower it. You might have high blood pressure. You have to look at the chart. You have to <clears throat> study everything well. So it's not about a lot of people talk about raising the frequency and, and the vibration. Yeah, in some areas you do. You have to <clears throat> know yourself, know your body, and know how to manifest perfect health mentally, emotionally, and physically. Mm -hmm own body because the body is the temple soul of man solomon solomon's temple soul of man yeah <clears throat> and so if we know our the chart is... to know thyself is to know thy chart would you say absolutely the best way to know everything about yourself is through the astrological chart mm -hmm. um there's Middle. many other there are many other ways, but they're not as comprehensive and penetrating as the science of astrology. Mm -hmm. Science of astrology is working with electromagnetics in degrees, minutes, and seconds of arc. So every degree in astrology, for instance, my son is in the third degree of Aries. My son's uh, uh, son is in the seventh degree of Libra, almost opposite mine. Mm. So that seventh degree of Libra, that has its own peculiar Libra nature to it. If he was born a day later, he would have his son in the eighth degree. He would be slightly a different Aryan, uh, a Libran. And then you have to look at the minutes of that degree and the seconds of that minute because every minute there are there are 30 degrees in each uh sign but every degree has 60 minutes and every minute has 60 seconds and in the minutes and seconds according to the ancient astrologers that's where all the information about you is hiding and guess where that information is hiding? Most astrologers don't have any of that information. Mm -hmm. it, it's all been hoarded 
in the Vatican Library because mm -hmm. they've stolen it from humanity so that astrologers are limited in the power and the penetration of their divine science. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get that back soon because very soon we're going to storm the Vatican yeah. and we're going to have scholars read all those ancient books mm -hmm. that have been there for thousands of years. The Egyptians have had 450,000 years of astrological bookkeeping wisdom. Mm. So and we don't have access to that. <clears throat> And that's medical astrology right there. So in the future, it's possible that our hospitals will be familiar with medical astrology and be able to find out problems that may happen in a person based on the malefics in their chart. Yeah, of course. Because as I said, can I just um, <laughs> Where'd you come I just with add that? something there? Bro, so, you got to know Santos, bro. I gotta, yeah, I got to I've been following talk. Santos for yeah, years, man. AD just came up there. <laughs> The Malefics, Mars, yeah, 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 Saturn, yeah, malefic. the Malefics, yeah, those good. are the bullies, the that tough guys. That was good, yeah, that was good. That and then Uranus good. is the Joker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was good, can go I, ahead, um, can I break that down? I'd like to add something there, what you were saying about raising and lowering your vibration. I think an important uh, principle to take into consideration there is from the Kybalion, uh, the principle of rhythm. Mm. Mm. Explain away, explain away. Yeah. The chameleon. Just, just what you were, just what you were saying about raising and lowering your vibration and the principle of rhythm and uh, correspondence, as above, so below. Within, without, yeah. In yeah. terms of how important it is to to lower your vibration as it is to raise your vibration and everything in the universe happening in a in a rhythm, basically. Mm -hmm. Can you give the people at home an example of? methods to raise their vibration meditation yeah. okay you, you go dear are you speak you speaking to me yeah you have a go man I, I, I would totally agree meditation i wouldn't i wouldn't mm -hmm. see uh any perfect way than yeah. to raise your vibration in meditation there's there's nothing really that separates you from the reality that we're we're currently in and really brings you to your true self which is, there's no, there's no higher vibration, really. Indeed, bro. Nice. And it's interesting. Which again, which again is why I said uh, that's the truth when you were speaking before about your, your friends and being caught up and, uh, you know, mimicking almost. Because yeah, we see movies like, like The Fifth Element. You've seen the movie The Fifth Element. And at the end, it kind of shows that The Fifth Element was love. And Santos speaks on that fifth element also as it being the ether. Right, Santos? So the ether would technically be love itself. Is that correct? Absolutely. Mm. So Absolutely. our purpose on this plane or planet, however you want to look at it so far, is, L -O -V -E. is love itself, living one vibrational energy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Love, so victory, we're here to love quality. ourselves, one another, and just feel that vibration. That's our purpose. Is that right, Santos? Yeah, brother, love. Of course it is. Oh, love okay. love is how we act. Truth is what we know. Mm. You will know the truth, and the truth will set, set you, you free. free. It right. will set you free from limitations, conditioned. Mm. People are conditioned. They're educated. They're dumbed down. Only that. the truth. Truth is first. It's the first principle. You can't have love without truth. You can have truth without love. Mm -hmm. Love is second to truth, but love is our religion. Truth is what we must know. You can't be ignorant and survive the, the strains of ascension and living in this material plane because we have a karmic... Um, According to Manly P. Hall, our way of evolving and growing is through the laws of karma. Mm -hmm. In other in other worlds, in other root races, it was different. There were different laws, but this law is karmic, and so that's what we're under. Mm -hmm. We have to mm -hmm. we, we have to be 
we are being punished. We are being put under trial and tribulation. We are being uh, tested. We are being um, exposed to things which, think about it, you know, the elite, uh, what they do with adrenochrome, how they torture little, beautiful, innocent, beautiful, sweet children just so they can get a kick out of whatever they want to do, you know, orgies, blood orgies and all kinds of obscene behaviour. Lovers so, of the flesh. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one, Lovers of the Flesh. That's one of your songs coming soon. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Sure. Walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the love. So they say we are made in the image of God and God creates. So isn't our purpose also to create? That's what, that's what all four of us are doing. We're all musicians and we've all produced and created music for the world to enjoy. And music. Music, Man. Is, music is the language of love. It is the language of love. It's a divine science. And so what do you play, Santos? So I play the, the guitar and the uh, harmonica. Mm. Nice. Mm. Uh oh, he's gonna jam out. It's about to be on, y'all. Give you a bit of a some harmony tone from Santos. All right, yeah. There's my little. Uh, I'm getting sleepy. I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> 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 What's that right there? Is your harm uh, harmonica? Okay. Harmonica, Blow it. This, is, this is called a uh, a little lady. Mm. Hang on, little lady. Let's get that on the camera. Yeah. Let's get on that. Anyway, I'll just give you a tune. Can't wait. <laughs> that was... I didn't know who was going to play that. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I was going to do a, um, I was going to do a, uh, uh, what was that? Was that Zippity Doo Dah? I was going to do a, a, that was crazy, right? He's in sync, man. You're in sync. You don't even know. All right, let's go. Yeah, look, this is, this is a, believe it or not, this is a $10 guitar, man. Uh, my good one's in Oregon, and I'm waiting. The Ramirez. Bring it down. But uh, yeah, just a little bit of flamenco. I don't want to, you know, do anything uh, intricate, but just uh, <laughs> a, a little bit of a demonstration because it's not even in tune. You can't tune this guitar. The action is so high. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just make a fool of but myself. But it sounds good, though. It sounds and I've good. Been, and I've been uh, playing for about six months because not having my good guitar, it just discourages me because it just it won't, it just doesn't produce any quality. So um, I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy one here. I saw one today, and I'm gonna get a good one and, and start oh. getting back into practice, and uh, probably add a little bit of guitar into some of my um, some of my stuff from now on. I guess. Yeah, Why man. Not? I'm, I'm gonna need some of that. I'm gonna need some of that for the music. You, well, me, I'm, and AD get get up and play some play some stuff. Yeah. I know I you love, know about 432 hertz too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you tune to 432? Yeah, mostly. What about 528? Uh, no, 432. <laughs> 432. But, but uh, Killer, I'd love to do uh, some flamenco on one of your tracks. I would love to. Well, consider it done. Consider it done. Um, we got to get the right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk. We're gonna build on that. I know me and Hi. your son. Uh huh. Yeah, and while while we're on the subject, I would love for my son to um, uh, share or at least um, give you some of the um, respect that he would love to. I'm sure he'd love to give you because 
I believe, if I'm not wrong, he has been inspired by you since he was 15 oh, or 16. And that's oh. a solid 16 years. Correct oh, me if I'm wrong. Man. Oh, man. Peace, no, Nevelis. Man, peace, brother. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, bro. Yeah, man. Yo, just been trying to hang in there, bro. Yeah, so. Man. Talk. Uh, huh? So, talk about talk about what um, Killer's done for you, Dave. Let, let let him know exactly how much influence and uh, how excited you are. Don't cry up here, man. <laughs> 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 nah, real talk, no, real talk. Like- He's not wrong, bro. He's not wrong. Since since fifteen, I've been a huge Killer Priest fan, man. Huge Killer Priest fan. Um, I think I think it's the uh, the epic biblical kind of lyrical content that got me from a young age. There's not. There's not. Uh, I mean, Killer man. yourself and probably Shabazz the Disciple. Mm. Two of my favorite Wu Tang artists. Mm. For that reason. Baz would love to hit that, man. Um, <laughs> I got to tell him. I got to tell him. Lyrical content. Shit, this shit's next level, bro. This shit's next level. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Yo, the energy that y'all give us inspires to write this. You know, it's coming from the hearts and the minds of the people. You know what I'm saying? Something they need to hear. So I think we... Um, I let Baz speak on itself, but speaking on both of us, I think we just... in. Inherit and pulling that energy, man. That's from y'all, man. So, but thank you so so much. I'm honored. I'm I'm definitely humbled and honored from that. And I think you already have a track for you to work on. Still, you're still working on that track, right, Uncle Nameless? I am. I am. I am. And uh, f- forgive me for the delay. You got a new but, studio. Um, it's all good. They gotta get that studio set up. Well, just after you sent me the track, we actually just started shredding this warehouse apart. Mm. Uh, so I didn't have a studio for a few months, actually. But as um, soon as I got it back, uh, I had a listen. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit disappointed in the quality of the beat that I sent you as mm. I made it uh, years ago. Mm-hmm. So uh, I spent I spent a little time working on the beat, looking for uh, higher quality samples. Um I know, AD, you're probably freaking out. Don't worry, I didn't change the snare. I kept the snare. <laughs> yeah, I want. I, we just made that kick and that snare just crack, and then the samples can just kind of like be atmosphere. But like I said, once, you, just, once yeah. you're done, once you're done with that, shoot it over, and I'll master it. And once you hear the difference of mastering compared to just a, a, a hot mix, it makes a huge difference. Hundred percent. Mm. I re- I recorded something to it. I'm, I'm currently I've I've been rewriting the lyrics because I chose. Well, I decided to go back into my old notebooks and um, dig up some lyrics from when I was younger, around 17, 18, because that's when I was really, I'm not going to lie, back then I was, like like I said, I was heavily influenced by Killer Priest. Mm-hmm. Like, um, that style of lyricism was more my thing when I was younger, not so much now. So I wanted to dig up some of my old old lyrics, but they just need a bit of a bit of a polish, bit of a cut and polish, you know what I mean? I hear you. So yeah, because I got the new studio. I want to. I want to record them in in my booth. I got a booth now. So yeah, because if you, you drop in a verse a after cool. Killer Priest verse, I know you got to make sure that is hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hundred percent. That's why. And I have recorded something, but I'm just like listening to it now that I made the beat better. I'm like, ah, it's gotta, it's gotta be better, bro. Like it's gotta. I gotta do the best that I possibly can, man. It's just like it's not every day you get to rhyme next to one of your heroes. So man, yeah, I'm humble. I'm it's, humble, it's man. A big thing to You're me, gonna so kill it's it. A lot bigger than to me than what you think you know <laughs> yeah you gonna kill it they want to know what's your rap name uncle nameless uncle nameless i don't know i don't focus too much on being a rapper though i'm more like uh to be honest with you i'm more focused on you know my success as a producer mm. but um wow but I, mean, I, mean, I, I can't not rap i can't not rap it's just it's something we've been doing since 15 bro ciphers and just hip-hop in general like it's you gotta send me some more beats, yo. Um, we got a lot of mus- musicians here, man. It's crazy, mm-hmm. all four of us. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. And uh, 100%. shout out to uh the the um the chat room, the Rockets and the Western name. They did some a lot of them have uh our uh, producers too, and MCs. So shout them out too. Yeah, yeah, cause Priest is like a rapper's rapper. 
Uh, a lot of people who listen to priests are also lyricists themselves. It's really interesting. He's almost like the jazz musician of music. You know what I mean? <laughs> because jazz is so high tech. Jazz is so technical that usually musicians are the ones who are really into jazz. Exactly. You know? I, I always thought priest was like the uh, the Sun Ra of hip hop. Mm. Ah, Sun Ra. Shout out to Sun Ra. Yeah. A lot of you. Sun, yeah. Sun Ra of hip hop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bill Laswell, shout out to Bill Laswell. He's the one that put me up on uh, Sun Ra, and I started listening to a lot of his uh, his music. He definitely was out there. I wanted to do his uh, his movie over. That was a secret of mine. Uh, Space is the place. Ever that check that? Was next level, bro. Next <laughs> yeah, level. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to redo that. Now, we was talking about it, so me and my man Katia was talking about doing something over there. But that was crazy, and and um. What's that you hitting? I see you hitting the, the herbs over there. You got the herbs. I got my tea. I just got my <laughs> some tea and some turmeric. Uh huh. B12. Nice. Oh, the B12. I got to get on that, man. When I went in, they said my pressure was kind of high. Oh, for real? Yeah, when I went into the. Uh, and I was like, all I do is take herbs when I went into the ER. Do you have a lot of salt? To check out my leg. Yep, that day, mm. probably I did. I probably. Some pink salt. But, you know. Uh, what do you do to bring down, you know, the the salt level, whatever? What herbs do you recommend for for your salts? Uh, yeah. sta stabilizing your salts. Well, what I do is see these. Yeah. Do it again. These are tissue salts. Okay. Tissue so, salts. Mm. Yeah. So being Aryan, I need to take potassium phosphate. Well, this one's uh, sodium phosphate. This is for uh, Librans. Mm -hmm. But I take all 12. I've got all of all 12 because that's the best. This is the best way to take salts. Potassium mm. phosphate. The guy who discovered. That's dope. Tissue salts was a, a German physician called Schussler. He lived a couple of hundred years ago. And he studied the uh, cremated remains of animals and human beings. And he found always in the cremated uh, dust that um, there were only these 12 salts. Then a hundred years later, George Carey, an astrologer, he discovered that if he um, administered a minimum three salts to each individual according to their astrology, mm -hmm. so so what I what what he did was for someone like me, an Aryan, he would give prescribe to me potassium phosphate for Aries. Aries is here. Sodium sulfate for Taurus. Taurus is the cerebellum. <laughs> and potassium chloride, it's Gemini, Gemini twin, <laughs> because each individual is weak in three of those salts due to the time they were born. And what he found was he was able to cure thousands and thousands of people by simply just administering the three salts of their astrology. Now get this, a lot of people will have a laugh at this and they'll say, oh, that's, you know, this is so funny, it's ridiculous, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll, they just won't comprehend this. Well, two years ago when I was in Australia, I had a Skyo machine hooked up to me. What they do is they put a copper band around your head, two around your wrists, and two around your feet, and they do a biofeedback uh, um, uh, reading of your body's deficiencies. And guess what the Skyo machine found? Because the Skyo uh, uh, technology includes the tissue salts, these homeopathic, amazing, best possible protocols you can ever, ever take. The Skyo machine picked up the three salts 
of my astrology, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, that were weak, and they also found my Pisces was weak, four signs that were weak. So here we have technology proving and confirming what George Carey discovered, that wow. we can cure anything and everything with these simple tissue salts. I take all 12. And this is an aspect of medical astrology again. <clears throat> so, so since you're an Aries, you need to probably have more parsley, carrots, beets, avocados to have that potassium phosphate, right? You get that in, in the food as well. But you have to remember that these, these are like nanoparticles. This is the finest, finest, triturated, homeopathic kind of mineral that your body can absorb. It goes right into the mitochondria. It goes mm. right into the depth of your flesh. This mm. penetrates everything. This is the only way you can take the salts, the minerals, to actually penetrate every field, emotional. What's the name of it? <clears throat> What's the name of it? We got to get that. That's crazy. Tissue salt. Tissue salt. Okay. Can you order it on Amazon.com? Oh, for sure. You can get it at your. You can get it at your local. Uh, health food. Nice. You can get it at pharmacies. You can get it at drugstores. Everyone. Everyone. So no matter no matter what your sign is, you should get all twelve cell salts. That's like the twelve zodiacs. Well, I mean, it's all connected. For real, is twelve actually twelve? Everything is based on twelve. Wow. Now, since Priest is a Leo, he needs more magnesium, magnesium. which is I do almonds, cauliflower, limes, oranges, grapefruit, figs, peaches, cherries. Yeah, but when I eat a lot of almonds, man, I, I'm not gonna lie, it's just like. Sometimes almonds get me like depressed after a while. I, was mm. like, I love almonds. No, yeah. no, no, no lie. I love almonds, but I, I, I eat them up because they're good for your heart, right? Oh yeah. Mm. For sure, almonds. Uh, they're actually considered a fruit, and um, oh wow. Yeah, it's it's considered a fruit, and we are frugivore by nature. We're not omnivore. We're not uh, carnivores. We're frugivores. Mm. So, Many of the fruits that you can have, a lot of them are nuts, like coconuts, almonds. You can have cucumbers, tomatoes. You can have um, a lot of things are fruits, which people don't realize are fruits. So the more fruit you eat, the more... What's a coconut? Is it a fruit or, or a vegetable? It's a question for the chat room, too. Well, it's in the it's in it's it's in many lists. Not, it's not for you. <laughs> it's not. I know you're gonna answer it. <laughs> what is a, a fruit? Is it a? Is it, I mean, what is a, a coconut? Is it a fruit or a vegetable? Fruit. You it's say a fruit? fruit. It's a nut. <laughs> oh, it's a coconut. <laughs> it's a nut. <laughs> it's a it's a gigantic nut. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? It's one of the biggest nuts in the world. It's a dad joke. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, man. I'm having fun, as uh, y'all can tell. I'm having some yeah. fun, man. We going through this. Hey, uh, sometimes you feel like a nut. Hey. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> That's AD on the one and two. Um, I need you to um break down um for me because I love the I love the synchroni the synchronism. Like uh, what what's up with the God of the no, I love the Garden of Eden. That just trips me out, man. What's up with the tree of life, man, and the tree of good and evil? Okay, again, the tree, whenever there is a tree spoken about, it's the hyperbola of the Taurus field. Mm. You see, when you talk of Taurus fields, the hourglass in the middle, mm. that's called a hyperbola. And... The root of that word is bowl, bowl. That's why in Latin, the word for tree is arbol, bowl. So mm. the bowl, the hyperbola, is the tree. And that tree is in you. It's your spinal column. Okay? But in the cosmos, it's in the North Pole. It's in the center of the earth. And it goes up magnetically and it it forms the Taurus field, 
which is surrounding our, our solar system. So, so it's called the Yggdrasil tree, and that is in you. It's in the solar system. It's in every torus field. It's in every atom. It's the tree of life. It is everything is trees because electromagnetically mm -hmm. the wave of electricity is actually called the root of it is akin to the word tree for instance in greek dendros is a tree and in your brain you have dendrites den is nothing but aden or adam or atom or aton it's the same word so the dendrites they are little trees coming from the, the Greek word for tree, dendros. But another way you can look mm. at it is um, you can look at it as the word uh, bowl because that is also tree. So um, your body it has a torus field surrounding it, but your the centre of it is a hyperbola. And the hyperbola, you have a word called um, hyperbole. Mm -hmm. When you speak in hyperbole, you are exaggerating. So the hyperbola is the exaggerating hyperbolic energy which comes out of counter space. And that is the tree of life. The tree of life is in you. It's in your body. It's in every atom. Mm. So when when it was told that man was blocked from the tree of life, break that down. When he was uh, when man unless he eat of it and live forever. Well, the tree of life is the source. We come from source, and we come into a counter spatial. We come into a temporospatial, uh, phenomenal, material existence. So when we take this body on, we take on this tree. Our nervous system is the tree of life. Mm -hmm. for instance. So the, the shape of our body is a tree, the Yggdrasil tree. So when you eat from it, in other words, when you incarnate, as the scripture says, the day you eat from that fruit mm -hmm. of that tree, you will positively die. Because when you incarnate, you have died because you have accepted conditions akin to death. Mm -hmm. We are so close to death and dying. At any moment, we could be dead because it's a dangerous plane that we live on. So we have been baptized in in death by accepting these physical bodies. Okay. And um, the tree of life, how does that connect with the Kabbalah tree of life? Is that the, the, the Kabbalistic tree of life? Absolutely. It's, it's in you. It's the ten-horned, seven-headed dragon, which is your chakra system inside of you. In, in other scriptures, it talks of them as the seven candles, uh, the seven seals. And this is why the Bible says that only the lion and the lamb are the two animals that are worthy to open the seals. Well, the lion is Leo in the heart chakra and the lamb is the crown chakra, Aries, the cerebrum. The cerebrum. And so they are the only two chakras which are able to open you up to mysticism mm. and to, to get you out of the plane of the, um, of the dead, the walking dead. Remember, Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Right. Don't worry about the dead people. It's not your, it's not your concern to, to save these. They're, they're dead. They're spiritually dead. So <clears throat> we who are acting on a spiritual plane, a higher intellectual plane, we're actually activating these chakras. We're opening up the heart chakra. That's the lion, Leo. Mm. So he is worthy 
to open the seals, the seven seals. And then when you get to the crown chakra, you're in heaven mm-hmm. because the head, Aries and Taurus, the, the cerebrum and the cerebellum, that is the head, heaven, mm. heaved up. <coughs> All of those HEA, heart begins with HEA as well, not just head. So that's why the lamb and the lion, mm. when scripture says, when the lamb and the lion lie together, <coughs> there will be peace on earth. That will, earth is your body. So when you get this crown chakra and your heart chakra in sync, then you know yourself, you've ascended. Now you have access to knowledge, which is really forbidden to the ignorant. Mm. And that's Working. that's interesting because you're an Aries and priest is a Leo. So together you are both the lamb and the lion, and you are both bringing knowledge into the world through this podcast. Oh, man. Is the podcast the arc? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's hard, man. Yo. Make some noise for that. Priest is, I mean, yeah, priest, you're the, uh, you're the lion. And you're, a, you're, a, you're a Aries? Santos? Yep. Wow, Aries. that's crazy. Aries, the lamb of God. That's crazy. And we have two with, fish. You have the, uh, you the, you the. I'm a, I'm a fish with a Leo moon. Okay, he's Pisces. And never, um, nameless? Nameless is a Libra. A Libra. So that's Libra. balance. Oh, man. So we got it. The scales. Man. It's on. It's on in here. Crazy, right? Yeah, that's why we link up so good, man. Mm. Fire and fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We both fire signs. Uh, yeah. What's another fire sign out there? Uh, Sagittarius. Sag. The Sag. The, the arrow. The nail on the cross. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Break that down. You said the Sagitt- The nail on the cross. Is the arrow. Oh wow! That's As the crazy. sun ends in Sagittarius, that's the nail on the cross of the zodiac. Right. Right. Every every year, and there were there were two more trees. Uh, um, Santos it disappeared on us real quick. He'll get back. Um, there were two more trees, um, and Zachariah or something like the two more tree. There were two other trees. I forgot the name of it. Was it? it were two two more trees? Well, huh? Well, there's well, there's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mm-hmm. and there's the tree of life. Tree of life, right? Right. So, the tree of life. Right. In your body, was one, yeah. your nervous, is your nervous system. Mm. So, so we, uh, humanity was forbidden to eat from the tree of life. In other words, <clears throat> the nervous system has been given to humanity for their current evolution. When oh, pardon me, man. This, this, this chat room is retired. Somebody said they want some trees. When they say trees, they talk about another kind of trees. Go ahead. <laughs> Cannabis. Yeah, exactly. You already know. <laughs> of course. The mother of all trees. That's our DNA, man. That's that's our plant, you see. Yeah. Speaking of, I um I got this for you, A D. So I want you to dap this in your Oh wow. This is uh diamond sauce. I wish you was here, Santos, so I can give this to you. This right here is diamond sauce. Check it out, y'all. This is the um this is all TAC um extract. And this okay. was given this was given by uh Cherry Cola. Cherry Cola Farm. They whipped it up. This is another KPOG. So this is like a um this is the sauce of it. I wish I if you was here, I would give you some of these. But uh, I'll get it to you. Oh, there you go. There hey. you go. There you go. <laughs> so what you got there? You know you already up on it. This this is the best uh, CBD and THC mix I've ever ever had. I take six mm. or seven drops in the morning, and I have all the medicine I need. I am virtually flying in bliss all day long. This is what makes and keeps me blissful every day. I've got a good supply of this. I've got um, some San Jose mushrooms. I'm going to take. Soon, mm. I've got, um, I've got, I want to show you this because I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, hang on a minute. This turmeric is kind of juicy, man. 
You like you like that turmeric? Yeah, why? Well, I, I didn't know turmeric was sweet like this. See that? that right there? That's yeah. Mes- peyote. What what is it? Pe- peyote. Oh yeah. Oh peyote. Yeah. Oh, you got some raw. Did I you also say? <laughs> did you also say it's mescaline? <laughs> yeah, mescaline, man. That's that's, that's the real s- peyote. This is the most healing of all substances. You take this mm. three days in a row. That's three. That's three days in a row. I'm going to do that next week. Um, this will clear, clean your gut. Mm. It will restore your gut, restore your immune system, and it will give you absolute sheer bliss. Cactus, they say mushrooms are absolutely very, very healing, but the cactus here in Mexico, there's nothing more healing than San Pedro or or peyote. So um, I'm in good hands, man. I've got all sorts of enthusians here. I've got all sorts of um, great healing plants. I do all my protocols. Man, make some noise for Santos, man. You on point, yeah. bro. It's interesting. Yeah. They mention they mention mescaline in the Matrix. If you see the beginning of the Matrix movie, Neo asked those uh, people at his door, "Have have you ever had the feeling that you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming?" Mm-hmm. And the guy says all the time, "It's called mescaline. It's mm-hmm. the only way to fly." Yeah, he did say that. And it's interesting that the Matrix would drop that jewel in there to mention mescaline at all because mm-hmm. it's kind of an unnecessary line you know yep. right. take that red pill follow that rabbit all the way down yeah. <laughs> wow some man. matrix action right there yep man yep. this is this is a lightning I'm, a, I'm i'm feeling like high right now like a good vibration is it a full moon we just left a full moon in aries oh we left the full moon i think we're in uh Going to talk to Gemini soon here. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I think it's Gemini tomorrow, but I think we're still in the loving sign of Taurus. So lots of love. Mm. Well, it's not Libra? We're in Taurus? the sun sign of Libra. Oh, okay. You know, I got to ask y'all questions. So 7, 5, and 12. I heard you break down these numbers, the importance of these numbers. What's up with well, the 7? Five and twelve. Okay, well, you already are a master of those numbers because when you play your music, you have twelve chromatic notes, mm. but you you only play usually in any given song. You only play seven diatonic notes, and the five, like the five black keys of the piano and the seven white keys, mm. these, these are the seven tones, the seven frequencies of the twelveness. Twelve mm. is mental, seven is physical, right? And the mm. five is spiritual. So twelve is the complete number. Seven is more the physical and... Um, according to Alvin Boyd Kuhn, it is the, uh, the frequency of the physicality. And so this is why usually only the seven notes are played in any given song uh, in general for it to stay in its general key uh, feel. Uh, of course, you can add, um, you know, uh, accidental notes in there you can you can virtually play a song chromatically but um very hard to do but seven five and twelve being musicians every each and every one of us on this panel uh we are already speaking that language and there's there is only that language once you understand that every wave form is a twelveness every vibration is a twelveness in your DNA, there are 12 um, segments of the DNA with the, with the four, um, gee, I forget what, what you call them now. You've got adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So I forget what the names of those are, but 
everyone knows this about DNA. DNA is two strands, and and the strands. Are, is it are the caduceus? The uh, 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 the right, right. The caduceus. Yep. Same. Right. Same. Got you, man. And they're supposed to open up the chakras. Oh, man. Could we have a chart of the chakras uh, up there, uh, AD? Yeah, I'll set it up. Why you build? Because I, I just need to see it. Why you breaking it down? Because um, it's so beautiful that you, you come with this knowledge, man, and it's a blessing for you to be, you know, returned back <laughs> again to drop this, you know, drop this magnificent science on us. And it's, and it's all truth. And it's about love at the end of the day, like you said. For everybody out there listening, you know, it's about... The ultimate, what he said is, uh, at the end of the day, is love and knowing who you are. You know what I mean? And um, he breaking it down so good, man. And you got to know it's a battle, man. And um, they're just chaos going against each themselves now. It seems like uh, the Vatican, the pre you see what's happening with the uh, presidency and uh, the Vatican and all of that. And um, all of this children stuff is coming out now. Man. Is wow. So, tell us what we need to what, what what zone we need to be in, Santos. Well, for the we viewers. Do yeah. Well, best thing you can do is <laughs> uh, stay out of television world and and media world and political world because it's crumbling. They're they're destroying themselves with all their lying and and all of their cheating and stealing from the people. People are just waking up in their, in their in the hordes. So go within. You know, I spend a lot of time alone. I spend a lot of time meditating. I spend a lot of time doing syncretism, um, teaching, uh, being available for people to answer their questions, to read their charts, to... Um, guide them on the way, and that's that's what I love doing. It's it's all I love doing. It's where I get my joy. So, obviously, the most important thing right now is to restore your power, your glory, your dignity, to be who you really are. You'll get lost in the media world, you know, going to the movies and following the Hollywood stars. They are there to lose you to allure you away from yourself which is god in its wholeness because you will be god unlimited mm. one day and mm. that is and that is your destiny that is your right that is your eventual um path that is your eventual glory. Um, great glory is coming to those who stand strong and endure till the end. Mm -hmm. And those who do not sell their souls. When I was a musician, I had plenty of opportunities to sign contracts. Sony wanted to sign me up. Um, mm. A lot of guys. And when I looked at the contract, I just got a dirty vibe about the contract. And no matter how many times I tried to change the clauses with my lawyers, so that I could get better conditions or whatever. It just wasn't pleasing me. So I never signed. I sold, <clears throat> I've sold about 150,000 record uh, CDs wow. just, just on my own, Damn. just doing street performances. 150,000. And I'm still selling music on, um, on iTunes and I haven't been playing for, for eight years. Damn. So, um, you know, the you sign, the sign, the sign is the sin. You don't need exactly. any business. Yeah, you, man, you're on point. Right. So it, that that's also what it means to sell your soul to the devil, right? It's to sign a contract with a record label or a. Sell your soul. What, that's an acronym? Sell your soul. Sign. What you call it? As, I mean, the sign is the sin. Sign but like, sin. Oh, it's not okay. like an actual devil with horns. It's a corporation that owns your 
your uh, creativity, basically. So you lose yourself because you've signed away what yeah. would have been just your soul. Like Priest hasn't signed his soul away because he owns yeah. his own record label, Proverbs yeah. Records. He's you, putting out his own stuff. That's right. You get con for your tracks. <laughs> it's a contract. They con you for. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> God, God. You know, that's look at that. That's what, that's what it is, man. With these lawyers. Back there again. Too nice. <laughs> Man, if you're just tuning in, um, we have Santos in here. We have Nameless in a place. That's his son, by the way. You know what I mean? And that's crazy. He's a dope producer, rapper. So, can I say rapper too, right? Just producer. Yeah, yeah. Rapper. <laughs> and um Thanks, we're just going over, you know, the synchronicity the synchronicity of the the scriptures with astrology and 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 how we got to look in deep into it. Yeah, synchronism. Exactly. And how deep we have to look into it and how does it affect and why they trying to take away and why did they take this knowledge out of the church, huh? Did the church ever have this knowledge or did it, you know, or, or this was just reserved for the mystics on the side or, or the, um, you know, help me out here. Is, uh, did they ever teach the truth? Yes. Yes, Absolutely. Mm. Uh, in fact, the churches, unbeknownst to them, mm. they, are, they are preserving the holy science of astrology. <laughs> mm. they're, doing favor, they're doing us a great favor by continuing to teach the science of astrology. Whenever they talk about Jesus and his 12 disciples, they are simply tell, teaching you about the sun and the 12 signs of the zodiac, unbeknownst to them. Mm. You know, Jacob and his 12 sons, the 12 trees in the garden of, in the paradise to come, the 12 pillars in the temple of my God in Revelation, the 12 loaves of bread on the uh, table in the tabernacle, the 12 copper bulls holding up the holy sea, the 12 sons of Ishmael, the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, the list goes on. Yeah, 12 jewels, the 12 temples at the end of Revelations, the 12, yeah, all of that. 12 nights of the round table. 12 nights at the round table, huh? Yeah, wow. Everything's 12. Where you at with the, um, cause I like the Vedas too, man. Mm. The Vedas is some heavy, heavy stuff. All, all the uh, Vedas. Where you at with the um, the Sumerians? Ooh. And they and they and they look at the, um, the ancient Sumerians Ooh. and they look at the, um, uh, because I know a lot of lot of stuff was adopted from them too, you know. So they look at astrology and what they was dealing with with the the Anunnakis, and they talked about all these other planes. And they said, "Oh, that threw me off." <laughs> no, but it, no, for real. Well, yeah, with the um, the ancient Sumerian, the, uh, were they familiar with all of these uh, with the ancient astrology? Yeah, well, the Sumerians are just Aryans, Sumerians, Su. And, we, mm. and we are all Aryans. So that's why it's said that they are the <clears throat> they are the first civilization, which mm. became the Babylonians and the Chaldeans. But I study Sumerian and Chaldean Babylonian astrology. It's what I teach because it is the true science of electromagnetics Dude. so i'm a i'm a babylonian sumerian chaldean astrologer mm, doug namtar yeah 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 uh the enuma elish the enuma elish yeah the enuma elish that's heavy stuff right there man. <laughs> that's heavy stuff yeah yeah, when you sure. talk, yeah so we got um wow the 12 disciples we got mars is mark so, Marshall, Marses, Moses, Moses. Okay, what's what's up? Okay, I don't want to act personally about Elijah because Ooh. he's supposed to be the one that made fire come down from the heavens and and things like that, and he's supposed to be like a real. What's his significant? Where did he fit into the astrology? Uh, Elijah. Elijah's the sun. It's there. Mm. All that every, makes sense. That's deep. Yeah, because you see, Elijah, I think he um, 
he either lived for 360 or 365 days or something when he was taken. Mm. And, and that number, I better check that because I don't want to give wrong information, but there is either Elijah or Elisha, there is a number associated with them. It's either 360 or 365, indicating that it is the sun on the ecliptic doing 360 degrees every year. So jar, jar, the root of the word jar is fire, and that's the sun. El is the Elohim. So Elijah mm. is just an archetype of the sun, the sun coming back. Just as Jesus is, just as Krishna is, mm -hmm. just, just as Horus is. Horus gives gives you the word hour. Well, it also gives you the word horizon. So when you look at your watch at the hour, well, you're looking for Horus. Where is Horus? The sun. At what hour is Horus? And then you'll know the hour, you'll know where Horus is. If Horus is at 12 midday, well, Horus is directly above you. So um, whatever name you, you see, whether it's Buddha, um, whether it's Quetzalcoatl, Viracocha, whether it's mm -hmm. uh, Zoroaster, it's always the sun. The sun is the ruler of our solar system and Aka universe. Mm. That's heavy. Horoscope. That's why yeah. you read the horoscope, because you're reading where is the sun in your chart? <laughs> because the sun Triple will give information. So you must know your Horace horoscope. Is that why so they call Horace horror? Like it's like it's like something that scares them, like a horror movie. Is that did I have did I have something to do with Horace? <laughs> yeah, horrible mm. horror. Mm. All these words come from the sun because wow. the sun is the demiurge which creates and generates this plane where there is horror, mm. but there is also honor. Mm, and then, same word, yep. And there's also healing, Helios, the sun. So that's why when you greet someone, you say hello, which is hell and low, mm. or you say hi, which is <laughs> up and high, and they all come from the sun. This is why you've got the word um, in Hawaii, they say aloha. Mm. In Spain, they say hola. Mm. Uh, you know, um, in or we say uh, hello, mm. hola, uh, uh, aloha. These are all the same Salam words. Alaikum. Shalom. It all yeah. comes from L, electricity, which ah. is the sun. L is the gods, yeah. right? The word L comes from God, right? And then mag is female, magnetism, Mary Magdalene, magnetic. Exactly. Mm. The Magi. Man, yeah, there's, there's frequencies going on right now. There's a lot of frequencies. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Go ahead. That was dope. Yeah. Yeah, there's only, there is only magnetism, which is the force. Uh, uh, sorry, the source. And electricity, which is the force. Mm. So electricity is material. Magnetism is spiritual. Magnetism is 10 billion times more powerful than electricity. Wow. Magnetism radiates, electricity vibrates. Magnetism is a longitudinal wave. Electricity is a transverse wave. Radiation, vibration. Source, effect. Redshift, blue shift. Electricity is the rainbow. When you see a rainbow, they call it the electromagnetic spectrum. That's just electricity generated by white light magnetism magnetism is white light mm. and this but, would also be uh divine feminine versus sacred masculine it's the virgin the pure virgin which is always white and pure because magnetism white light 
does not vibrate. The vibration, electricity is a hybrid. Mm. Electricity is uh, an effect. It is temporal. It's not eternal. It's not infinite. It's finite. This, this wave decays. The longitudinal wave never decays. It always grows. It's motherly. It's expansive. It creates space and time. Magnetism is time and space. Thank you, Ken Wheeler. Hmm. Wow. Ken Wheeler is the scientist who has a great YouTube channel teaching all the secrets of magnetism, which I have learned. I've learned a lot from Ken Wheeler. His YouTube channel is called Theoria Apothesis. Ooh. And there you will master magnetism. You will understand the three field modalities, dielectricity, black light, magnetism, white light, mm. electricity, red shift, blue shift, red pill, blue pill, red blood, blue blood, roses are red, violets are blue, mm. Republicans are red, Democrats are blue, mm. red pill, blue pill, um, red siren, blue siren, red for hot water, blue for cold water, red for baby girls, blue for baby boys, because the electrical world is red shift, blue shift. Back in the day when they would watch 3D movies, the left side was red and the right side was blue. Mm. So you would watch, remember 3D? Yeah. Back in the day when it was red and blue? That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm high as hell off this off this stuff right here. Yeah. I'm listening though. It's dope. <laughs> yeah. It's like Reese is on his tea. Yeah, I'm on this, some turmeric and cayenne pepper and I just threw some um, uh, cinnamon in. It's the same thing that sent me to the hospital. That's messed up, right? It's uh, <laughs> That's some oxymoron. Mm. I was boiling tea. I was boiling ginger and turmeric, right? Turmeric, ginger, and uh, cinnamon with lemon. You'd think that's healthy. Then the tea kettle broke. And the hot water fell right on my leg. So it was an oxymoron, man. Messed up, man. It was yeah. on your Achilles heel. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it should have helped quicker. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. No problem. That that was my little my little thing. So, but uh, yeah, I'm good now. James Brown said, "Get on the good foot." Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I also liked when um, Santos would build on Abraham. Let's do that. Let's do some. Yeah. What's up with Abraham? Because I know that name right there. I can already see uh, a couple of things in there. But you break it down. So Ab is father. Abba. Um, Abel. All of these Ab words is dealing with the father. And so Ram, the Ram is... The Ra, R-A, the sun, radiation. Remember, the sun is magnetic, so it radiates. It doesn't vibrate. So Abraham is the sun. Remember, everything is the sun. Everything. Mm -hmm. All names come from the sun. Uh, your name, Killer. Uh, A.D., your name. David or Dio comes from the sun. Santos means the sun. Abraham mm. means the sun. Son of man. It's the name of our group. The Crazy. sun incarnated. Or in other words, the sun that we can see with our eyes. That is Abraham. Wow. And Abra is like abracadabra. Mm. Means abrasion. Abrasion is what black and white light do. Dielectricity and magnetism. Black light, dielectricity, is rest. White light, magnetism, is motion. Rest and motion are the two co-eternal principles of the universe. When abrasion happens between dielectricity, stillness, and magnetism, motion, in Sanskrit, mag means to move, hmm. hence electricity, uh, sorry, magnetism, radiates and moves 
dielectricity returns to the stillness. The black light, like uh, dark energy, dark matter, um, all of this dark stuff they talk about, um, black matter, it's all about dielectricity. It's counter space. White light is space. So counter space and space work together in abrasion. And you've heard of the god Abraxas. Abraxas is the ancient syncretistic uh, god of the Greek period, of the ancient period, Abraxas, Abraham. All of this was known to be the source of energy, abrasion. Mm. Abrasion is how everything begins. Abracadabra means I create through the word. The word is sound, abrasion, because it's abrasive. So Abraham is mm. harking back to that principle of abrasion. Remember, everything is abrasion. That's how everything begins. That's how every... I think about think about this guitar, right? So this guitar now, you cannot hear these strings. No. Nope. Because they are dielectric at the moment. They are still. But when I produce a sound, you can see that string vibrating. But remember, vibration decays. So that sound is not going to persist forever. It's going to go back to the stillness. And that stillness is where all the power is because this guitar mm. has the potential to produce any melody, any song, any symphony, any orchestra that the human genius can produce because it's all in the stillness. It's all there in the potential. Mm. It's in your power to create an electrical, temporal, experience called a song so you'll be singing along yes and toast <clears throat> and some will be dancing but mm. eventually that song has to go back to the stillness mm. because we have the power to create and the only way to create is through sound and light so when you think you are producing light, light waves, and you are also producing sound, and they are little ohms, this is why atom, all is atom, according to the Egyptians, mm -hmm. is so important because everything is singing om on a different frequency and a different pitch, but there is only om. Because O or Aom, A O M, is the true way of saying it. Aom. Mm, this, Aom. Yep, this is how electricity Alarms. sounds when it comes out of the stillness. So, All is Om. So when you meditate, you go Om. Yes. And so the word of God is all light and sound, vibration and frequency. That's what God is. Sono luminescence, sound and light. In the Bible, it says God is light. Well, it, well that's God. You, you don't have to question. You don't have to ask further questions. What is God? You, you have the answer there. It is light. Everything is light. Everything is produced by white light, magnetism. He is the light of the world. Magnetic. That's God. what you say before you uh, smoke, a good, smoke a good one like Nevertheless over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you say right before you pull on. You said, let there be light. And then you hit it. <laughs> Blow a nice one. And after prayer, we say, amen. Uh-huh. Right? Um, so, yeah. Amen. Um, amen Ra. Mm-hmm. Right? Amen um, Butter Nuts. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Um, Men. <laughs> and that's and that's all the vowels too, right? A E I O U. Oh, right. Well, the correct way. Sometimes. Yeah, the why? correct way to sing the Om 
is the seven vowels. They're not five vowels. There are seven. And they are these. A, A, E, I, O, O, U. So when you go, then you have the full om. So it sounds like this. That way you clean and you activate every chakra, not just, say, the heart chakra. So it's, it's correct. There is, there is also another one which has 12 vowels, according to um, a, a Hindu teacher who contacted me and taught me it, but I, I wouldn't know how to, how to do it right now. But I know the seven. But if you want to just keep it simple, just do the... Um, the um, <laughs> Boy, somebody says something tough. Oh, no, you repeat. Oh, man, who's that, man? I gotta call him out. He's gonna say, How do I fight my court case? <laughs> now, if if this is done correctly, doesn't it also isn't it also meant to stimulate the pineal gland? Of course, yes, because that's that's <laughs> the sound that's the sound it makes. If you take entheogens like DMT, for instance, all you're gonna hear is little ohms. Wow. You're gonna hear you're gonna hear a mm, sound. You will hear sound hmm. <clears throat> if you listen carefully. You will hear that M. This is why the cow Taurus, which is the symbol of the Taurus field, hmm. what does the cow sing? The cow sings moo. Moo is the opposite of om. Whoa! <laughs> it's the same thing. It's in reverse. It doesn't matter. It's it's exactly the same thing. It just has oh a different. Oh my thing. gosh! So mu or om, it's Taurus. It's the Taurus field. If you want to generate a stronger Taurus field around you, where you have more magnetic um, influence, mm-hmm. where you, uh, you radiate more. You see these weak and depleted people with no scruples and <clears throat> no zest and no charisma in their lives. They're all kind. Of, they're all they're all kind of shrunken in and 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 depleted. Mama, <laughs> dry. There's no radiation. That's because they're not doing the good work. Hmm. Mm. So to love God is to love yourself. And raise your frequency. Yes. And one thing you pointed out in your videos was that every portrait, well, not every portrait, but many portraits of Jesus would have him pointing to the heart. And the heart is ruled by the sun. He's always, exactly, he's always doing this, right? Mm -hmm. He's pointing upward because you've got to go up to to heaven, but you've got to go through the portal of the lion, the lion gate. That's why you have this word lion gate mm-hmm. or um, lion heart, Richard the lion heart. The lion heart is the heart. So you go through the, the, he says, go in and up. You have to go inside of yourself and then you will ascend. The opposite of in and up is down and out. And when someone is down and out, they're not in a good way. Mm. The people who are down and out, they are in a bad way. But the people who are in meditating and up in consciousness, they're in a good way. So you don't want to be down and out. You want to do what Jesus says, go in and up. Mm. In and up and follow the right path. <clears throat> now, some of the Buddhists uh, had that same, that same uh, gesture, right? Like yep. Shiva. Yes. And a lot of Trouble people- Man, yes, I remember Saint Rose. Saint Rose. That was a deep uh deep video game. Mm-hmm. The kingdom of God is within. You mm. don't seek it. You don't seek it without. There's nowhere out there that you'll find it. It's it doesn't exist. It's an internal thing. It's a condition. Heaven's mm. a condition. It's, it's not a place. Mm. Hell is a condition. It's not a place. It becomes a place because you bring it there. For instance, if I'm sitting here and I'm really miserable, 
and demented and depressed and suicidal, well, then the condition that I have is now in a place. It's localised. So, yes, hell does exist physically, but it's a condition. Hmm. It's, it's a created condition. The same that is, is how you can create your own demons. You can create your own de- egregores. Mm. You see, you see uh, demonic people, uh, down and out people walking on the street, talking to themselves, talking to their... <clears throat> I don't know who they're talking to, but... Yeah, they're having, themselves. They're arguments <laughs> with themselves, you know. Well, that's yeah. just their own demons that they've created and attracted into their Taurus field. Mm. And that's I remember why... Taurus field, okay. The, 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 uh, okay, yeah, I got you. Uh, that's the, uh, the, tree of, the tree of good and evil. Yeah, and I remember yeah. you referring to demons as being of the moon. And if the moon represents mm. your emotions, the moon, then people who are overly emotional are possessed by demons. Is that a good way to say it? Yeah, they're lunatics. The Ooh. lunar is the moon. Or they are monkeys, uh, mm. demons, deities of the moon, um, um, demented comes from that word. Mm. Monster. Monster moon. moon star. So the moon. Mm, that's odd. Moon star, right? Yeah, the you're a monster. <laughs> I like that. And also, and also the word monitor. Monitor means moon Taurus. So Monitors. there are a lot of people out there who say that the moon is some kind of a satellite that is monitoring us. Well, mm. That's what the, the word monitor means. It is monitoring us. They all are. So the moon is the moon Taurus, which is monitoring us. Because if you don't have enough frequency to go past the moon through the sun, the, the real saviour, you're not going to go to the place you think you're going to. That's why Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3, buy gold from me so that you can... Purify yourself. Gold is the sun. Hmm. The moon is a place that rishis go to, but they don't ascend. You can only ascend by going through the wormhole, the lion gate of the sun. The sun is the lion, Leo, the ruler of Leo. The the moon. The sun also exalts in Aries. So... I have a Leo rising and I have an Aries sun. So I have the Lamb of God and the Lion of the tribe of Judah in my astrology. So <clears throat> cerebrum and heart have a very strong connection in me because I have sun in Aries and I have Mars in Leo. And that's called a reciprocation in astrology because Mars rules Aries and Leo rules the sun. So those planets are in each other's signs. They're flipped over. The sun is here and my Mars is in Leo. That's called a reciprocation. And they're doing a perfect trine with a three-degree orb. So my sun here is connecting with my Mars in my heart. And so that is an extra connection which I have, which we all need to have. We need to connect our hearts with our cerebrum. And how you do that is going by this, going in and up. Hmm. Cereb- Cerebrum. Yep. Well, the cerebrum is another way of saying Sarah and Abraham. That's where, that's where they live. <laughs> Heaven. Same Head. Place. That's dope. <laughs> that was heavy. That was heavy. Sarah Bram, Sarah, c- Cerebrum. That's where we get the name Sarah. Sarah. <clears throat> Build on, Every- brother. Build on. <laughs> Everything in the Bible Sir- is, yeah. is biological. The whole story of the Bible is in your body. Jerusalem is your pineal gland. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah are your, your two lower chakras. Um, Sodomy. Uh, Clear me. Yeah, Sodomy, <laughs> exactly. The lowest chakra, the red chakra. Sodomy, where sodomy happens. That's mm. where Sodom and Gomorrah are. Gomorrah is the sacral chakra where sexuality occurs. And usually that sexuality the, uh, the is ch- the wrong kind. 
It's mm-hmm. the last one. Why he's building? We got the chakras up there. Could you could you get the tree of life also? Why he going? I just want to see it. Is it, man? Uh, where it tells you the Keter, the Keter, and um, what is what's the Kabbalah tree of life? Mm. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So we have that. We have the you have the chakras too. And the Kabbalah uh-huh. is showing how those planets are inside of us. Right. So, so keep speak. those, yeah, keep those there because I want to, this is, this is why, why he's building. This is good. Yeah. I can't see those. Yeah, I can't, you can't see them? He can't see from this angle. But, but you already know where the shit. Yeah. <laughs> you, made, you made it with your hands. <laughs> we look, we're looking at the Kabbalah tree. Yeah, because um, you said the solar is the, I mean, the, the, okay, we have the crown to the roots, but the middle is the. What is the solar the solar plex? Hmm. Solar plexus. Yeah. Solar sun. Yeah. Nah, just keep on going, man. You were dropping it, man. It was it was heavy. I just wanted to see the the um the the chakra the chakra forms and the chakra and the, and the the tree of life forms as you build them because I'm 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 actually getting a visual of it. You know, I'm visualizing in my mind what you're saying. But when I see it, it's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. I can see the points. The points that you're talking about, that's that's heavy, heavy stuff. There's a very serious and structured science as to how to do all this. You can't just, you know, uh, you can't just push or rush a kundalini experience because you can actually have psychosis. Some people, this is why you got your Christians telling you that the chakras are from the devil. They don't <laughs> exist. All these people who are activating their chakras, right. uh, you know, they're worshipping the devil. Well, this is because a lot of people have done harm to themselves by doing it wrongly. Mm. Right. Yeah. Spirituality is serious business. You, yeah. know? <laughs> you, don't just, you don't just decide one day I'm going to be spiritual and uh, you've got all the uh, tools and equipment that you need to progress. You, yeah. You got to get smart about this. You got to really be serious and you have to be um, devoted. I've been devoted since I was a little boy. I've always been theological, musical, uh, astrological, linguist. Um, I've always been into the arts and the sciences and I've always been inclined that way so i've never ever left the path and i've i've got a long way to go i'm no master of anything i haven't mastered music i haven't mastered syncretism i'm just a i'm just a boy in my path but i acknowledge that and i know i've got a long way to go but that's all i do and i will do it and if i don't master it in this life it'll be in the next because there's no other path Mm. that is that is suitable for me and that which I will go on because I have, I know who I am not. Yeah. And I know what I don't want. I've tried all the bad, nasty things that the world offers Mm -hmm. and I've reveled in the pleasure of them and they have not satisfied me. There is no satisfaction in uh, sense gratification. There is only temporal pleasure. Yeah but it does not bring you what you're really looking for, which is bliss. Sat, chit, ananda. Ananda means bliss. There are only three things that your heart needs. Hmm. Sat, existence. Chit, consciousness. Ananda, bliss. We are all seeking sat, chit, ananda. Hmm. So, So in order to get that, you have to go in a different modality. And you have to be diligent and devoted to the path. It's fine if you're beginning and you're still, I don't know, you're still stuck on alcohol or... Um, it, it's dopamine. People get addicted to the dopamine effects, huh? Whatever it is, you know, some people are still addicted to flesh, but they're on a spiritual path. Well, oh. eventually they're going to lose that, you know. Mm. They're bound to because flesh will limit you because... Eating flesh is introducing uh, the animal 
energy into the body, which animalizes the human. The human is mm. here to divinize, not to animalize. Mm. We don't want to be more animalistic and argumentative and opinionated and, and uh, having secondhand knowledge. We want direct knowledge, the truth. <clears throat> we want to divinize, so we want more power, more magnetism. Mm. I, want, I want all my powers restored. I want to be the full magician that I was born to be. I, I don't want to be limited like this. Mm. I don't like the fact that I have to eat, urinate, defecate, sleep, work. Uh, that's, those are limitations which I want to free myself from. So that's and why I followed the imperative. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Nothing else will. Not love. The truth will set you free. Isn't that ruled by the cerebellum? So we talked about the cerebrum, which is the top <coughs> mind, but the animal mind is the cerebellum or the cerebellum, which is Taurus. Isn't that right? Yes. Mm. Yes. Is this why Taurus is ruled by Venus, which is also Lucifer? To the bull. Yeah. Yep, and Lucifer's, uh, Venus's negative side is lust, lust, leisure, pleasure, um, you know, self gratification, sense gratification <clears throat> on the negative side. And she comes so, in beauty. She's beautiful because one. Venus represents beauty, right? Uh, Bella the first, is the bull. Yes. The bull is Bea, Bella. Beauty, love, virtue, principles. Wasn't that wasn't that the oldest form of God? Was uh, they they made images of the bull? Wasn't that supposed yeah. to be like like a yeah? And the bull you, is the Taurus, right? Yep, you'll find that many images were for God. The lamb is the most common. Mm. The lion and the bull, mm. because because they have to do with the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the heart. That's mm -hmm. why. And then the other animal is the serpent. Because that's yeah, the, the serpent, right? Yeah. So there's always these four serpent. animals, yeah, which always turn up in every. The lion is in there too. Huh? Yeah, the lion is in there too. The lion. Always. Yeah. It's always yeah. Bull, the serpent and the lion. Right. Period. Right. Wow. Somebody pointed out in our chat, which I think is cool, that in the Matrix they say, "Wake up, Neo." Uh, and it might be referring to the neocortex Ooh. in the brain. Neo is an anagram for the word one. Mm. So when you become one, you okay. wake up. See, when you, mm. when you see everything through your two eyes, red shift, blue shift, then you are always visual and in the electric temporal world. When you go to the monad and you see with white light, mm -hmm. then you become Neo or one. Neo means one. It, all, it also means new. Neo in, in Latin is new. So you are renewing yourself. Neo is a very, very clever word. They chose that word specifically. Mm -hmm. And many of us have incredible dreams so much to the point, like I've had dreams where I'm having full conversations back and forth with some random person in a dream, and it feels so real to the point where like, how am I having a full-on conversation in my dream as if though it's happening somewhere else? Do you know what I mean? It's called yeah. Cat Daddy Kush. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like the dream world seems like a different dimension sometimes. Right. And they call them out-of-body experiences. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely, it is. It's it's, it's out. It's out of the. Um, it's out of the thinking world which you, um, which you create. It's it's out of that. It's it's non-thinking. It's it's non-linear. So dreams are actually real. They're more real than this dream that we're living right now. So the more you can dream. And lucid dream, the more your ascension pro process um, hastens and uh, activates. So dreaming is very, very important. In the Bible, the interpreters of dreams were the most prized and honoured and respected of all the prophets and priests. Wow. 
in every culture because to understand dreams, you know, is to, um, to escape time and space and understand reality from a different perspective because you're actually, those dreams you've actually lived hmm. or mm. will live. You will see them really, really one day, and you'll call that de- deja vu. Oh, but it's that I dream. knew it. Like I've dreamt about this. I've been here before. Those types cool. of situations. That's amazing. Cool. Many ask in the chat if we're living in a simulation, because we do understand that the DNA is digital. <laughs> you know, so technically we're in a humongous high-tech computer. If you were to formulize it act like that especially since there's so much numerology involved so much 12 it's technically such a formula that we're in the golden ratio of existence it's a computer would you say like or in other words the matrix yeah yeah, yeah you good i'm just reading <laughs> they're yeah. crazy man go ahead no i'm i'm catching what you're saying that's heavy yeah yeah you're right uh, re- reality is is dualistic it's digital and analog Digital is magnetic. Magnetism pulses and radiates. The universe is pulsating like your heart. That's why you check your pulse, your heart pulse, because your heartbeat is a pulse and only magnetism pulsates. It's what they call the particle. You see, they say we live in a particle wave universe. That's not true. Hmm. We live in a pulse wave universe. The pulse is magnetic, it's the source. The wave is the analog world, which is electrical. And so we have a both digital and analog world. The analog is, you're seeing me analog now, but I'm actually pulsating. If you could see quickly enough with your eyes, mm. you would see me flicker on and off. You would see me disappear I do. and then reappear if your eyes were quick enough to capture my anatomy flickering on and off just like this AC light, AC um, <laughs> alternating current light, which you see analog, Go on see continuous, Go on but mm-hmm. it's not. It's flickering because you can only see it 24 uh, frames a, a second with your eyes, wow. whereas the pulse of the universe is much faster. So there's a great New Zealand um, <laughs> scientist called Bruce Cathy, and he speaks about how um, the universe is is it's like it's not constant; it's pulsating, like the sun. This Luigi Pierre Igina, the great um, Scientist, he said the heart, the sun is a heart. It's pulsating like a heart and at the same rate as our heart. That's Mm -hmm. why Leo rules the heart and Leo is the sun. So we have to understand that first and foremostly, we live in a magnetic electrical world, which is pulsating digital and vibrating analog. Is this also where the idea of ghosts and spirits would come from if they're existing in either another dimension or a different frequency? I wish I had Dr. York and this, you know, this is heavy. You know, because some talk about the mediums being able to talk to those who have passed. It Was- is. It is because they're able to go, as Bruce Cathy says, many scientists now are discovering how to go in the space where there is nothing. Because when it pulses, when the universe pulses, we see continuously what our eyes, what appears to our eyes. We do not see the spaces in between. Mm. And so the power of magic is in the spaces in between the pulses. That's why Mm. masters can walk through walls. Mm. Many, many. People have been known to do this. They just, with their body, they just walk straight through a wall, a solid wall, because what they've done is they've found the space in between, Mm -hmm. what we call reality. 
Wow. Mm. The hands are quicker than the eyes. Mm. And we're all going to do it. We're all going to be doing it soon. Yeah. Now, that's mind over matter. That's mind over matter. Matter is mother. Yeah. Let me show you a trick. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because Priest has shown us some interesting magicians that have done some magic tricks <laughs> that just seem to be out of this world to make things literally disappear, card tricks, um, almost to a point where uh, it looks like... It's, it. Yeah, yeah, they're crazy. What now. was his name? I forgot. Eric Chin. Eric Chin. You, got, you guys got to check that out at home, but he's a magician that just does the most <laughs> magical tricks you'd ever seen because stuff would disappear right in front of you. Shim Lim. I feel like he knows something with that yeah. type of... He's, he's, he's actually, he, he has the power yeah. to, to relocate that item mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the space which you don't see, but it's still there. It's called um, Telekinesis. Cloak, oh. cloaking. I think it's called cloaking. You know how they can cloak drones these days? You can have mm. a drone in your you can have a drone surveilling you 24 hours a day, but you won't see it because they're cloaking it. It's mm. invisible. It's called cloaking. Hmm. Yeah, because I've also heard of telekinesis to where people are able to manipulate Same objects. Same stuff. That's right. Hmm. Yeah. Open sesame. Yeah. They kind of, the Matrix kind of yeah. has that with the bending spoon. With the idea that the spoon isn't really there, and then the spoon the spoon bends, you know that'd be. I I wish Ooh, I had telekinesis. Let's go ahead. I would love to open doors without even touching them, and not not because of this plant. You might have it. You might have it. It's just it's just it's just it just turns on a low flame. Yeah, just a low flame. That would be cool. Because if it comes to your mind and it's somewhere, like like what Santos is saying, if it's if it's if it's there. It's somewhere around, and you just have to tap. Those cats that know how to like to walking through the walls, they tapped into their powers that was already there. Mm. So he just disappeared again. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. I'm doing that because I'm lighting this thing up, and I don't really want to, you know. Uh, oh yeah, 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 light up. So now you got to try that, man. You got to try that. I'm gonna try yeah, that. Put a little so, bit on your paper. In, or, or however you do it. Oh, I will. I'll, I'll smoke. If I smoke this now, we're going to really go to outer space. But yeah. um, no, I wanted to mention Chi. Uh, Qui okay. Qui-Gon Chi in the ancient uh, Chi. Uh, oriental Chi. worlds. You know, uh, Bruce Lee was known to be able to harness Chi to where they're almost throwing fireballs or they're throwing uh, an extra energy from all the meditation that they've put up into their aura. That's simply just electromagnetism, right? Exactly. It's it's in my it's um it's in my name, Bonacci. Mm. Good chi or good <laughs> energy. So eventually when I'm worthy, which obviously I'm not yet, and when you guys and everyone else is worthy, mm -hmm. you will be restored with yeah. those gifts. It's it's all according to your worthiness. It's like a little child, right? If a little boy He's two years old and, and his neighbor next door who's four years old has got a push bike and, and two-year-old comes up to you and says, Daddy, I, I want a bike. Mm -hmm. but you know that your little boy is going to be too reckless to have a bike yet. You wait until it's the right time. We call that worthiness or, mm -hmm. you know, readiness. And then we give that child a bike. All of a sudden... He comes home from school, he opens his bedroom door and there's a brand new bike and he goes, oh, wow. And it comes sometimes when you don't expect it, but when you do good work mm -hmm. and you grow, you will grow into your power. You will have all your power. You'll have all the musical skill that you've ever wanted. You will have all the syncretic, syncretic wisdom you've ever wanted. I've always been seeking the truth and syncretism all my life. And it's come to me. Mm -hmm. I have it. So all I have to do now is master it. All I've got to do now is master these things. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm on that path. So when I get there, you're going to know. Because yeah. then I will be able to say, hey, you know, I've, I've mastered it. Yeah. 
It reminds me of the Marvel movies, how Thor can lift his hammer because he's worthy. Hmm. And, you know, when he's not worthy of the hammer, it won't go to him. But when he is worthy, he has the hammer, and then he has the power. And then, you know, Thor is Jupiter, Thor's day. Yeah, Lancelot. He's the mm-hmm. one who is worthy to pull out um, uh, Excalibur, you know. Um, who else is worthy? The lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy. Um, worthiness. Yeah. Um, Who's worthy we, to open the books? The angel, right? Somebody was had to be worthy to open a book. Hmm. Yeah. So with all of this knowledge, people have the ability to become almost superheroes. You know? Like, instead of... That's our destiny. Right? Mutants. Yeah, yeah, that's who we are. We're all Marvel heroes, just... Instead of Thor and and Scarlet Witch, you have Ares, you have Taurus, you have Gemini. Yeah. And they all have special powers. On Marvel, you have the word L on the end of it. Oh, there you go. Marvelous. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, That's it. That's it. Love it, man. I love it. Do people don't catch AD? (laughs) Hey, we all do it. I just catch on. Yeah, yeah. We're all in the space. I love it. I love the wordplay and I love the linguistics. Of all of this and how things break down with words, man. You, man, you beautiful. Uh, I mean, what you're dropping today, man. If you just checked in, make sure you hit the subscribe and the super chat. If y'all want to hear, if y'all want to ask Santos any question, you are also. We also have never. Um, <laughs> my bag. <laughs> my bag. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. His son is on here also. Who's an ill producer? Unnamed uncle. Un- so, Uncle Nameless. Yeah, Uncle Nameless. Yo, look, make sure you hit that subscribe. Act, you want to ask him any questions? And then for all y'all want to know, um, Uncle Nameless, if y'all want beats from him or where, where would they hit you at? Your contacts. Uh, you, you can hit me on the email, unclenameless at gmail.com or Instagram, Uncle Nameless, Uncle underscore Nameless. Okay. And you're located in Australia or... Yeah, that's it. Melbourne, Victoria, nice. Australia. What time is it out there? Early in the morning? Right now, it's uh, no, it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon, bro. Wow. 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 That's crazy. And Santos, you're in, uh, you're in Mexico or you're in an undisclosed location? No, no. I'm, everyone knows I'm in Mexico. I'm on Central Standard Time, so it's 1 a.m., uh, Central Standard Time, and I'm in Oaxaca. Oaxaca. <clears throat> yeah, the most magical place in the world. Oaxaca. I've heard a lot about Oaxaca. Oaxaca. Mm. They have the, a lot of indigenous, like, real, some deep yeah. stuff out there, yeah. Yeah, it's very right heavy. Place. I have to come out heavily. there. When I go to Mexico, I'm going to Oaxaca. Hmm. Come on down, brother. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll look after you and, and uh, show you around. I've got a nice little four-wheel drive tracker. Yeah. We, we can go up to San Jose and get some mushrooms and have them up there. Nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nice. <laughs> Sit down. Do you, do, quota. you do any microdosing, Santos? Always, every day. Nice. And that constantly is putting out more DMT throughout your day, right? Sure. Because I'll tell you, when I did mushrooms, it was like, all my priorities came up in front of my face. Like, I knew exactly what to do. Like, yeah. the clarity of the mushroom, it was like I forgave anybody that I had any problems with. It immediately makes you almost a spiritual-minded person. Mm. And you feel like you know exactly what you have to do. So I got to a point where I'd be tripping on mushrooms, and I would write to myself for when I sobered up. Like, hey, mm. you got to do this. You got to do that. Watch out for this. Blah, blah, blah. And then once you sobered up, you go back and read what you wrote. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> That's it, man. The mushroom, yo. Know the mushroom song. <laughs> yo, it's that, yo. That's that. Uh, we can go on and yeah. on. Psilocybe. The psilocybe. Psilocybin. Yeah. The Amanita the, Mascara. The Amanita Mascara. Cup you know. of Christ. Yes. Yep. Yep. We can go on forever on that. Yep. I love it. Love these conversations, man. Mycelium. It's the mycelium. Is that's the, that's the incredible part. Right? The mycelium is what makes everything move. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Priest has been doing songs, speaking of the Merkaba, 
right? Yeah. And um, pretty much as above, so below; as without, so within. All of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's it's amazing how Priest's knowledge is expanded into his music. Well, it's 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 like a. Uh, Man, I'm just loving it just to be here at this time. And um, we have the podcast. I'm going to make it all about I mean, this is my po- podcast, but mm-hmm. I just want everybody to know, you know, if y'all got some questions, please, please. Um, my question is the Great Flood. Where does the Great Flood uh, come into? And Noah's Ark is built on, on Noah and the synchronism of that, synchronicity of, of that part. Well, again, Noah is... Noah's Ark, the Ark of Noah is the ecliptic of the sun. The sun is arcing through the heavens. Mm. Noah, you see, the sun produces seven colors of the rainbow. That's Remember, the rainbow was associated with Noah. And Noah, in his ark or in his bark boat, which is the ark of the rainbow, He carried seven other people in his ark. Well, that's the sun and the rainbow. And it's telling you that the sun is always carrying these seven other forces or archetypes with it. So it's telling you Noah is magnetism, the sun radiating. Sun does not vibrate. It is magnetic. It is not electrical. The only electricity in the sun is in the arcing on the surface of the sun. Mm. Thank you, Eric Dollard, because Eric Dollard teaches that the sun is cold. It's cold. It's not hot. Mm. And it's it's empty on the inside. Well, I'll go a step further and to say that the sun is just a hole a holy hole Mm. in the sky. It's not a globe. It's not a spear. It's not a ball. It's a wormhole. Mm. It's a portal in and out of this solar system. The sun is a portal. It's a portal. It's a wormhole, a holy. That's why it's hallowed. That's why the way to God is through the sun. Yeah, our Father in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Our Father in the heavens is the Son, because the earth is the mother. Mother Earth. Yes. But to be saved, is that you, Mary? Have to, you have to go through the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son. Of oh, man. The Son of God. The Son of God. Mm-hmm. Wow. Man, man, That's shut up the boy boots. Yeah, if y'all just tuning in. Yeah, I'm your host, Killer Priest. If y'all just tuning in, man, uh, going through it. Uh, it's our second time, and not our only second time. It's going to be more times. We have yeah. Santos on there. We're going to make you a regular, man. I mean, <laughs> it's got to be crazy. Yeah. We yeah. also got Logan coming in next week. Well, he, uh, we'll do a Zoom with Logan. Okay. But Logan uh, also works with Santos. He's the numerologist. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, And he's yeah. also the nutritionist. Right. I talked to Logan a little bit about diet, and he told me he has four apples every morning for breakfast. That's it. That's amazing. That's it? Four apples? Four apples. That's wow. some coffee. Uh, oh, an apple a day. We keep the doctor away. Man. I do say that. Interesting. <laughs> but, but, yeah, we're going to have Logan on next week, and uh, it's great. It's just awesome stuff. We have great guests. This is crazy, man. Man, man, this has been great, bro. I mean, <laughs> this has been great. Man, I've enjoyed my time and, and everything. I mean, do you have anything else that you want to drop? I mean, I mean, at some point I have to land this plane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For real. Um, well, you, go ahead. What I'd, li- what I'd like to do is um, express my gratitude to you guys for turning up and my son as well i really appreciate having him on this is the first some, time yeah. we've been together yeah. and we we've actually make come some together nice for uncle nameless yeah yeah makes some noise for uh, uncle nameless yeah we've actually come together with full respect for each other's work oh. uh my son has respected you for decades um you and ad have followed my syncretism Mm -hmm. and learned from it and enjoyed it and respect it so i want to just express my gratitude for 
for you, for you, Killer, and all the influence that you've had on many, many people with your truthing in your rapping, and um, and AD for being the um, the guy who brought us together when we were in Los Angeles and yep. um, to do that first podcast. And um, I just want to let you know that I, I really appreciate that, and I think. Um, Many blessings will come from it, from mm-hmm. all of our um, listeners. And um, I hope it just inspires people to do their best, to optimise, to, to be better than what they are now always and, and to grow. That's so beautiful. I, I thank you. That's beautiful, brother. You're welcome and thank you too. When the next time, um, anytime you're in L.A., let us know. Come over, we go get some food, and um, we man, we talk about the stars and the heavens and the moon and <laughs> all of it, man. And, and drop it, and we do some music. Let's cut something, man. And um, same with you too, Uncle. Yeah, I'm. A, I'll, I'll probably be over there soon too, uh, uh, in Australia. I'll let you know when we coming what? over there. I'll let you know when we what, we yeah, doing. Some, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yo, That's Uncle crazy. Nameless, Santos, Manachi, yo. Make some noise for them, yo. Do you have um anything to plug? You know what I'm saying. Like uh, you could you could check out your work where I know y'all you and AD should be uh, y'all gonna be working together, right? Oh, that was a subscriber. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's uh, we got some crazy uh, sound effects or whatever going on. Yeah, they're automatic. All right, man. So I want to say peace and thank you too. Um, do you have uh tell the people that where they can reach you at? Things like that. Uh, with me, the best thing is my YouTube channel, Mr. Astro Theology. There you can um, find the links to my website and anything else, my Patreon. Um, anything to do with me is you can go directly just to my YouTube channel. In every video that I've published, in the, um, in the notes below, you have all my contacts and everything you need. But um, the good thing about my channel is you can watch Syncretism forever. There's 700 videos on my channel. Most of them are more than two hours long. Uh, Right now, I'm sitting on 160,000 subscribers. I've had tens and tens of millions of hits, not only on my channel, but on the other hundreds and hundreds who upload my videos and get more hits than I do. So... I guess please try and support my channel first <laughs> um, because it also provides me with um, income as it is monetized. I don't know how long it'll stay up for with all the censoring that's going on, but my channel has been shadow banned and um, blocked. The sus- subscribers don't get notifications anymore. Mm. Fuck. What happened? Earthquake, man. No way. Get out of here. Wow. Yo. Yo. Sorry about the completive. I'm sure the it's place a place. It must be. Dropped. Did you see it? Yeah. Yes. Was it a coincidence? Yo. Mother Earth has spoken. <laughs> wow. Yo, with that, that was heavy, man. That was heavy right there. For real, the whole- we just seen it. Man. I, I, I was in one. I was in one three months ago. It was doubly as strong, but this one it was absolute. This one would be a six. The wow. last one was point seven. Okay, I'm looking right now to see. Check. Yeah, that 20, was crazy. Twenty five miles. Wow! If you just tuned in, what makes rain, snow, hell, and earthquake? What time is it over there? It's one twenty. Yeah, I see a lot of earthquakes <laughs> in Mexico here. That is a massive earthquake, man. We have just had a massive, massive. Wow, earthquake. man! I'm glad you're okay, bro. Yeah, Mac. Yeah, it's up there. Wow, it's, it's a four point five. Four point five. People don't understand. Yeah. Here's a four point. Well, that one's crazy. in September. I'm just trying to see recent. Yo, that's the knowledge, man. We when we start when you get powerful energies together like that, Mother Earth gotta just be like, yo. Yeah, that was heavy. <laughs> That's crazy. The, the pop-
podcast concludes with a with an earthquake, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Wow. Man, so with that, man, we want to let you get safe. And to a place to find out some more information on that. <laughs> Yo, oh we're about to land this rocket, man. Yo, you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. I'm yeah, they're excited. Back. Yo, Uncle Nameless. Yeah, we just dropped it. Yeah. So I'm going to say shout out to y'all. Peace to Santos, Benachi, and um, Peace, Uncle Nameless. Yo, we'll do it again soon. Peace. Yo, it's time to land, a, land this rocket. Here it comes. Let's it Take care, guys. Much love. Always crying, man. All right, Santos. Thank you so much for everything. Tears of joy, though. Those are tears of joy. Yeah, those tears of joy. We, that's something that we always end the podcast with. It's pretty cool. I'm trying to get some music up here for you guys real quick. But yeah. Why don't you take us out with some guitar? Oh, damn. Santos. Hey. Take us out with some um, harmonica or guitar. Uh, let's do the harmonica, I guess. Say, hey, what do we do? Um, something. Um... Still, uh, <laughs> still in the, the rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Can I bust rocks off the rust? This is prophecy. I ain't just talking tough. Democracy rules everything around me. Dream. They put me in charge of the new Tiger team. Illmatic, still savage, still addict. Mechanics build the rhymes. I build the mechanics. Buying every language, trying every programming. To copy rap flows nowadays, no challenge. Smoke don't rise in the opposite direction. Overhead projectors don't stop to perfection. Gallop over the poles after the election. The master of impressions like Zachariah Sitchin. Permission to get crunked up. Ask the instructor, big brother, nigga, level one lyrics this summer. We live in tumultuous times. I must be out of my mind. Recording rhymes like I'm soldering wise behind giant porcelain tigers. We're needing no 